Okay, so we've come to our second destination, the second stop on the Charlotte Soccer Tour at the Sportsplex at Matthews. You can see it up there. Sportsplex at Matthews. So this is in Matthews. It's just right outside of uh, outside of Charlotte. It's a really nice town. It had a nice little downtown area. It took me about, I think it said it was a 28 minute drive from, uh, from, from Queens University where we just were. Here we go right here. This is the field house. Team entrance. I think the players might walk right through here to go out into the stadium. Yeah, team entrance. So this is owned by Mecklenburg County. It has 12 full-size soccer fields. I think the practice fields are over there. So this actually seats 2,300 people. Now, I've seen plenty of games on TV. I didn't know the stand over here was this big. I thought it was, because every time the, uh, the camera, the camera's always up top there. So the camera's always looking that way. And you see this, the stands on the west side of the field, I think that would be. And, but you never see these ones. Yeah, these are bigger. Sun's shining. Flags are at half mass for some reason. I don't know why. And actually, I've, they just added that, that stand over there. I don't know. You guys can't see my fingers. They just added that stand. That stand's never been there before. So this, they had a soft opening in 2015, but it was actually opened in 2017. The stadium has hosted both the men's and women's soccer tournament just last year. And in 2025, it's gonna host the NCAA Division II Soccer Championship. So the Division II College Cup will be coming here. This is a really nice stadium, actually. I remember Charlotte Independence used to play here. They played American Legion, which we're gonna be visiting in a couple hours. The current tenants here are the Charlotte Eagles, the Charlotte Lady Eagles, and Stumptown Athletic of the National Independent Soccer League. I don't know, but they're on a hiatus right now. So, looks like it's just the Charlotte Eagles. And like I said, Charlotte Independence used to play here from 2017 to 2021. The clubhouse right over there is really prominent on the television whenever you watch, whenever you watch a game. Here it is, so the fence isn't in the way. Let's walk back this way. And as you can see, there's, it says SP all around the stadium for Sportsplex. The field looks pristine. Nice designs too. Lines going that way and then in the middle circling around. Really nice. The gates are open. Uh-oh. Coming up right on the fields here. Look at that. Beautiful. Where the announcers are, where the camera is whenever I was watching the games. So I actually wanna tell you guys a little bit about these teams' achievements. Because I said that they are one of the most accomplished teams. And not only that, but being that they were founded in 1991, they actually are one of the oldest uh, soccer teams in America. I know, you know, just been 30 years, but a lot of teams have come and gone. A lot of professional teams have had hiatuses. So uh, 30 years in America is actually quite a long time. But here's some of their achievements that they've had. Uh, back when they were in the USL D3 Pro League, which was the third tier at the time, and it was a professional league too, they won it all in 2000. They won the whole thing in 2000. They were champions also in 2005. That was also the third tier, but that was called the USL second division. So both times they were in the USL third tier, different names of the league, but essentially the third tier and they won the championship both times. They also were runner up in 2013, but that was when they were in the second division, uh, USL pro. So uh, they lost and 
in that year they actually lost to none other than Orlando City. And the final score of the game was 7-4. 7-4, and it was they played in front of 20,886 people at the Citrus Bowl, and the MVP was none other than Dom Dwyer himself. So actually, you know, they played Orlando City in a championship game with Dom Dwyer as the MVP. Crazy, in front of 20,000 people. Final score, seven to four. What a game that would have been to see. Uh, they also were the champions again in 2017, this time in the Premier Developmental League, which is the fourth tier, which is now USL League Two. Uh, and then again, they were the, and not, I'm sorry, not again, but they were the runners up in the 2018 Hank Steinbrenner uh, Cup. It's like the, it's, Essentially, it's like the FA Vaz. It's a tournament for the best amateur teams uh, in America. This year, it's actually going to be held in Flint. It's for the NPSL winner, the uh, USL League Two winner, the host team, and the amateur national champion. So those four teams qualify. It's one of the most prestigious non-professional tournaments in America, the Hank Steinbrecher Cup, and they finished runners-up in 2018. And now, to tell you a little bit about the U.S. Open Cup run that they went on in 2012, they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. They beat the El Paso Patriots in the second round. Now, they actually, they actually, this is very interesting, they played four games, okay, and their first three games were all against teams from Texas. You know, if anyone knows where North Carolina and Texas is, they're not even close. So, in the second round, because they got a bye in the first round. They beat the El Paso Patriots 1-0. Then this is where their, their giant killing really came in. They beat FC Dallas 2-0 in the third round. So they upset FC Dallas back then. Then in the fourth round, they beat the San Antonio Scorpions of the now defunct NASL. And they beat them 2-1 in extra time. And then unfortunately, their Cinderella run came to an end in the next round against... <laughs> good old Chivas USA the now defunct Chivas USA so the last two teams they beat actually aren't even in existence anymore the San Antonio Scorpions and Chivas USA and they, they lost to them in Fullerton California so they definitely got to traverse the country going to Texas going to Cali but yeah 2012 like I said the Charlotte Eagles man one of the most successful uh, non-professional side wouldn't call them an amateur I would call them more semi-professional team and one of the few Christian teams too in America most teams you know obviously you find that a lot more in Europe or in South America teams that are founded by churches that's very common here in America not so much most of them are like the typical American based franchises some rich guy comes in and starts a franchise because the people around town won a team but yeah no this team was actually founded by a missionary group what's the name again where is it the division of missionary athletes international organization picnic benches to enjoy your concessions which you would get, I don't know, where are the concessions at? I see a bunch of restrooms. No concessions though. Ah, and now here we are up in the nosebleeds. Oh, what is this? Dank Clayton. Uh -oh. Maybe that's just the guy who designed it. Yeah, because it says it on everywhere. Let's go and get a bird's eye view of the stadium there we go you can see everything from up here I just found an opening to the field yeah they thought I wasn't going to find it On the field again. 
Look at this. And not a soul in sight. Drainage system's running. It's beautiful out now, but it was pouring earlier. Do a little rat. It's the North Carolina flag, USA flag, and the Mecklenburg County flag. scoreboard the town of Matthews and there's a guy hiking up top there I love it soccer field so let's put a symbol of a guy hiking nothing wrong with that it's where the rowdies sit the the ultras right behind the net more branding it's everywhere let you know where you really are not a single sign of the uh, Charlotte Eagles anywhere, but Sportsplex at Matthews everywhere. Let's see if we can find our way out through here. Get to the other side. Only one way in and one way out. I don't know, maybe the entrance is open over here. If not, I'm gonna have to walk all the way back. Yep, it's closed. <laughs> uh, I gotta walk all the way back. Oh well. Here's the view from the other side. 